The guidebooks tell us that Ridgefield is a beautiful colonial town in Fairfield County. Well, I lived in Ridgefield for a number of years, so in a way, I look upon it as sort of my hometown. And it's kind of fascinating that my hometown had a well-known hero in its history, someone I'm sure you're aware of, Benedict Arnold. To tell this story, let's go back to the afternoon of April 25th, 1777, when an entire armada of British ships carrying thousands of soldiers arrived at Campo Beach, Westport. They were there to invade Connecticut. Their destination was the town of Danbury, because it held a huge prize. This is Danbury today. At the time, it was a quiet farming community of a couple of thousand souls, but it had been selected to play a significant role in the revolution. It was an important supply depot for the Continentals, a town loaded with stores of all kinds desperately needed by the Americans, and the enemy was on the way to destroy it. The British had a wild time in Danbury. They burned houses and all the stores and supplies they could find. But the British general began to realize he was in a precarious position. News had come that the entire countryside was filling up with American militia, mm. just waiting for the Redcoats to try to march back to their ships at Campo Beach. Leading the militia, was that army officer, whose name is known to just about every American, Benedict Arnold. In Bethel, Arnold heard the bad news. They were too late to save Danbury. Arnold realized that all he could do, since he was outnumbered almost four to one, was to make their return trip back to their waiting ships as difficult for them as possible. And thus came about the Battle of Ridgefield one of General Arnold's finest hours. General Arnold's strategy then was to station his forces along the only two roads the British could use to get back to Campo Beach. The constant firing from the Americans made the march a nightmare for the enemy. During these skirmishes, a second horse was shot out from under Benedict Arnold. The British mission had been accomplished and they made it back to their ships, but at a terrible cost. They had hundreds of casualties. They would carry out only coastal attacks in the future. Never again would they attempt an inland expedition in Connecticut. Arnold's bravery and heroism at Ridgefield became known throughout the land, and it resulted in his appointment to the coveted rank of Major General. He was honored for his heroism but many felt he could not be trusted. He had engaged in a number of dubious financial dealings. But the commander-in-chief still believed in Arnold. In spite of everything, the man was an incredible soldier. It is not known for certain just when Benedict Arnold turned against the United States. Perhaps it was when he was criticized so strongly in the Congress, or when he was court-martialed for misusing government funds. The only punishment he received was a reprimand from his superior, George Washington, but that was enough to anger him and cause him to seek revenge. When the new Major General requested the command of West Point, the request was granted. Though its buildings at that time didn't look as imposing as they do today, West Point was important. It's not generally realized that it was the most strategic spot on the American continent. It was the Gibraltar of America. Almost half the population of the colonies lay to the east, half to the west of the Hudson River. If the British controlled the Hudson, they could prevent Washington's army from maneuvering. And Benedict Arnold planned to turn West Point and its 3,000 defenders over to the British for 20,000 pounds a huge sum in those days. It was on a September morning in 1780 that General Arnold met with a British spy on the shore of the Hudson River near his headquarters. The spy was Major John Andre, Adjutant General of the British Forces and an aide to the British General Clinton. Andre met with Arnold and accepted some documents. 
the plans of West Point, which he hid in his boot. Wearing civilian clothing, a fatal mistake, John Andre began to walk south, and when he came to Terrytown, which he thought was held by the British, he was stopped and searched by three Americans. The spot is clearly marked today. There's a bas-relief sculpture showing the capture and search. The boot is off, and the incriminating documents have been found. One of the Americans says, the plans of West Point, someone should notify the Commandant there. The Commandant, of course, was Benedict Arnold. The word of Andre's capture got back to Arnold at about the time General Washington was due to arrive at West Point, so Arnold managed to get clean away. Well, as things turned out, the British didn't get West Point, and Benedict Arnold received only 6,000 pounds for his efforts. The Redcoats made him a brigadier, but they never really trusted him. As a British general, he seemed to be filled with hatred toward things American. We come now to the darkest chapter of the life and career of Benedict Arnold. In 1781, the English High Command in New York City was aware that the Americans were marching south with thousands of troops to attack Cornwallis in Virginia. A victory for the Continentals there could mean the loss of the entire war for the British, which of course is exactly what finally happened. The British general decided to create a diversion by an assault on New London, Connecticut, an important port and supply center, and they had just the man to lead that attack. Brigadier Benedict Arnold, who had only recently deserted the American cause, because he knew that town well. That was what was so terrible about his assault on New London. He had been born and raised right here in New London County, and he was set to destroy this entire area in an attack that was a notoriously cruel and vicious operation. Think of it. This was his home, and he put the entire region to the torch. To carry out his assault, the local fort had to be taken, and Arnold knew that fort well. He'd been involved in designing it. This is his actual drawing of the place. He knew there was a certain angle where the guns of the fort could not be brought to bear, and that ships could approach from that angle safely. He knew just where there were small entrances, that could be forced. The New London defenders in this fort never had a chance. Under Arnold's orders, the attack led to one of the worst examples of sheer butchery of the American Revolution. The fort and all its garrison had surrendered. The American colonel was stabbed to death in front of his troops, and the soldiers of the fort were then slaughtered. That massacre at the fort was just part of Arnold's operation. He demolished the entire town of New London, homes, buildings, the port itself was destroyed and left in ruins. He was a very brave soldier, and in Richfield, Connecticut, at least for a while, he was a truly heroic figure. But Benedict Arnold was also unscrupulous, cruel, vindictive, and of course, one of the most notorious traitors in American history. His life ended in London in 1801. Whatever else may be said about him, he was a giant of a man and a key figure in the history of southwestern Connecticut.